Guess what I did today? I overclocked my iMac G3. This was a 600 megahertz computer and now it's running at 700 megahertz. I tried 750 megahertz but it was a bit unstable and it kept crashing. Went back down to 700 and it's doing a lot better. And now, now this thing can work as a media PC or an anime engine or whatever. So I have a bunch of episodes of Sailor Moon loaded onto here. And now, before, whenever it would play one of the videos, it would regularly max out the CPU and that would result in it dropping frames and the, and the video would skip. But now you can actually see that it's not fully using up all of the resources, which means the computer now has the, has the capacity to render all of the frames and so the video doesn't skip, which I'm really happy about. Actually, it goes down pretty far now, and now it's about there. We have all that bit for, like, anything else. Like if it needs to change the pixels on the screen really fast or whatever. Some things change a lot, though. Like, whenever the pixels are changing a lot on the screen, it does max it out a little bit more. But, in general, it's like, what? 12 or 15 percent faster? And so, it's going to render 12 or 15 percent more frames. Which is great. I'm really happy with this. Oh, and yeah, so I... Of course I had to pick a Sailor Moon wallpaper, because... Well, I saw it on the internet, and it's like, you know what? I really like how that looks. It's all nice and colorful and happy. And it makes me happy. And this is going to be for watching Sailor Moon anyway. So, I went with that. And I am happy with it. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just really happy, because... Well... So, if you're not very familiar with circuitry, which I, I assume most of you are, there's either through-hole or service mount. Through-hole is what you normally think of with the older types of circuits, where it's actually, like, in the circuit board there's a hole and the pin goes through it and the solder holds the pin in the board. But most of the modern circuitry is actually just on the surface, and so it's just like a little tiny little component that's just stuck to the surface of the board and doesn't actually go through what it means is that those those are so tiny and difficult to move around and I kind of guess I guess I kind of underestimated my soldering capability my soldering skills because I mean after all I did manage I managed a rapid prototyping lab and I did kind of specialize in soldering so I guess it's not a surprise but I was able to move the the little bits of uh the little resistors around to overclock this with a giant soldering tip and it was just like whoop, worked fine it's like well hey nothing really messed up granted a couple times i didn't get enough heat and so i had to come back through and heat it up again because it just didn't make a connection but that was it, it's, it's nothing it was just so it's so simple so I'm kind of happy, kind of pleased by myself too. I'm pleased that this thing worked and I'm really pleased by myself because it only took like two or oh, actually more like four hours counting filming. But if I didn't have to film it, it, it would be it would be less complicated, you know, setting up shots and whatnot. So I could do this in about two hours. I'm so happy. And now, whenever I go back to Silicon Valley, I might see about keeping an eye out for a 700 megabyte or megahertz motherboard. So this was seven. So this was 600 megahertz, and I upgraded to 700. I'm thinking if I found a 700 megahertz board, which is the highest this was, they were ever sold with, I might be able to take the 700 megahertz to 800 megahertz, and that would be yet again like another 12 or 15 percent faster than this. So like 30 percent faster, or actually, yeah, 33 percent faster than what this originally was. If I took a 700 megahertz to 800 megahertz, you know, it's, ah, it's so cool. The boards do have the capabilities to go up to 1 gigahertz, but just, that's just theoretically. You can tell it to go to that, but it's not actually going to work at that speed unless I find a bunch of logic boards and just tinker around with them. There's a chance to probably fry them though, so I want to have quite a few. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm so excited to have a, have a manga machine. No. Anime machine, you know, whatever. I kind of don't trust the handles in these anymore, though, because anytime I pick it up, it all kind of like creaking sounds and this plastics. Well, I mean, it's 16 years old. 
I'm just, I'm just waiting for like me to pick it up and boop, this pops out and it falls on the ground and shatters into a thousand pieces. When I, when I open this thing up, like all the little tabs and stuff like that just cracked off. You know, like they're, so they're supposed to be like you press them in and they move off, but this plastic's so old that just, they just shattered off and it's like, well shit. Now I have to put tape on everything to hold it back together. I measured the bottom of the CPU while I was out running for about 20 minutes and it didn't seem to have any heat issues. So that's pretty cool. So I don't think I have to worry about adding a fan. I didn't overclock it too much though, so I think that's okay. I've seen some people say like they took a 500 megahertz to 800 megahertz. That's like three times as much as what I did. So yeah, no wonder I don't have to cool it yet. I'm just so excited. I'm also really tired though, so I think I'm gonna go to bed. Oh, tomorrow is when my Sailor Moon laser discs come in. So hopefully I'll have season one on this thing and season two on Laserdisc. I should probably get around to to maybe doing a little bit more tuning up on my Laserdisc Laserdisc player. Which I forgot it's right down here. And I'll yeah, I'll probably hook it up to my computer so I can get a direct transfer because well, when I hooked it up to my monitor that I use for checking videotapes and whatnot. It had a lot of static. And when I hooked it up to that TV over there, which is my, my good TV, my 1986 or 87 Magnavox, it's the one that I play Nintendo on and everything. It had a little bit less static, but still some static. So I'm thinking there might be more of an issue with just like the wire going to the television, not so much this. And so I might hook it to my computer, that I, the capture card that I have for capturing video. And I might have might have a better a better view of if if it really is outputting static or not, because there, there's like a little bit of some specs on some of the laser discs. I think it might just be this laser disc player though, because this laser disc player is one of the lowest quality laser disc players that was ever sold. Actually, the second lowest quality laser disc player ever sold. So I don't doubt that it is not going to be very good, but it seems to still work, so that's good. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm so excited. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya.